When NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft flew past Uranus back in 1986, it was the first and still only close glimpse of this outer planet. And it had scientists baffled. It defied their understanding of how magnetic fields work. But 38 years later, after painstakingly going over the data, researchers say it can all be explained by a cosmic coincidence and that Uranus and its moons may be able to support life. To help us understand this, we are joined now by Jamie Jasinski, who is a space plasma physicist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Now, Jamie, before we get into this new research, can you tell us what we thought we understood about Uranus and why? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for having me on. So, like you said, most of what we know about Uranus is from the 1986 flyby with Voyager 2. And that flyby lasted about five days, and the data from that where we observe the planet, the, the moons and the magnetic field is what has shaped the, the understanding. So uh, one of the mysteries that was left over from this was that the magnetic field that we observed and uh, that we took measurements of with Voyager 2, uh, we observed no uh, charged gas uh, in the magnetic field trapped within the system. So that's really unexpected. We've been calling it a vacuum magnetosphere for the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's unexpected because you would expect uh, charged gas from the, the moons and the planet itself. So Saturn uh, has a moon called Enceladus. It's this big ball of frozen uh, water. But underneath that frozen crust, you have this subsurface uh, liquid water ocean that's constantly releasing water into the system uh, and filling that magnetic field. But we observe nothing with Voyager 2. And then the other sort of uh, interesting mystery left over was the fact that you have this magnetic field that it's completely empty uh, with this, it, it doesn't have any of this charged gas, but very close to the planet itself, we observe these very intense radiation belts. Um, so Jupiter has the harshest radiation environment, these very intense radiation belts, and Uranus is the second one. So where, where, is, where are these uh, particles coming from if you have a completely empty system, where are these particles coming to feed these radiation belts um, and energizing them? So that was sort of the state of the picture the last 40 years uh, since the flyby. Yeah, so this outer planet, it, it was considered a bit odd. What has this new research uncovered? So we went back and actually looked at the data to look to see what was going on during the flyby. And what we found that was, was that during, uh, just before the flyby started, um, activity from the sun essentially released a whole bunch of plasma which smashed into the magnetic field of Uranus and this absolutely squashed the magnetic field to about 20% of the size that it was before um, and this can act to drive all that uh, charged gas out of the system and then can feed those radiation belts and that's uh, really important because uh, it kind of explains why we saw nothing from these moons. We thought that these moons may be sort of uh, inert, inactive moons with just their frozen balls of water. But now we're thinking that actually this opens the door that they might have subsurface oceans that are liquid, uh, subsurface liquid water oceans, similar to what we see at Jupiter with Europa. So Europa is a moon of Jupiter and it's got more wa liquid water under its surface than all the oceans on Earth combined. And uh, we didn't think that could be possible at Uranus after Voyager 2, but now this really opens up the door that you could potentially have all this water at these moons at Uranus. And so what do we understand better now and, and why is that important? Uh, I mean, the search for habitability mm. for possible life is obviously one of the key investigations for NASA and for just science generally. And obviously the, the slogan usually is, is follow the water. So now if, if these moons that we previously thought weren't really an, a place where you could find uh, uh, subsurface oceans, then probably weren't thinking that there could possibly be life. But if they're, they are more similar to the sort of moons that we know at Jupiter, uh, like Europa, then you could possibly have these large bodies of subsurface oceans at, at the Uranian moons. NASA physicist Jamie Jasinski, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you.